Well, similarly, uh, we need to understand what strains are. The strains definition, strain definition is, is quite a bit more complicated than the stress definition. So when you get done with this module, you need to be able to, to write strain tensors and be able to explain what, what strains are. The, the, the strains are more complicated because there's a cross product uh, concept with them. So here's our elemental area, dx by d, dy by dz. Um, I'm going to call these three points at these three corners um, A, B, and C. So you know, a, a is this corner at that point, and B is that point there, because we're going to move them around. So when I apply stresses to this thing, um, if I if I have this element like this, and then I, I apply some stresses, and the and and the thing deforms, you know, it's going to it's going to both. <coughs> It potentially is both going to translate and deform. So it, it's going to move to an area where point A moves um, from here to A prime, point B moves from there to B prime, C there to C prime. I could do that for all the, the, all the uh, uh, corners of the element. I'm just going to do it for three of them because it gets too complicated. And then what we're going to do, uh, uh, that illustrates what I just told you. And then what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to look at this in two dimensions. I'm just going to take that those there's two sides of that cube and look at that because that's complicated enough. So this is before deformation and this thing started off with a with a length dx and it went from a to b and this started off with a length dy and it went from uh, from a to c and then um, a moves uh, follow when, when I apply the stress a moves somewhere it follows this vector p um, and it's going to displace amount u in the x direction and amount v in the y direction. Uh, similarly, b is going to do the same thing. It's going to move, um, but it's going to translate more differently than you. I never say more; it could be less. But it's, it, in the in the x direction, it's going to be translate u plus some other amount, right? And that that amount that it's going to move is the partial of u with respect to x, so that the rate of change of the displacement times dx, right? If a moved, if a moved uh, u in the x direction, you know, b is dx farther in the x direction, so b must move at least u plus a change, which is plus, plus a little more than u, could be negative and be less than u, and that amount more that's going to move is, is however fast u is changing in the x direction times dx. I promise you this is as complicated as differential equations are going to get for No, we're going to talk about flow. It'll get a little more complicated in a little while. But, all right. Similarly, in the y direction, um, in, the, in the y direction, b is going to move v, obviously, because it's going to move at least that much. Plus, it's going to move a, a little more. How much more is it going to move? Well, it's going to move dv dx times dx, the partial of the v displacement in the x direction times dx. And we can do the same thing in the other direction. So point uh, A moves U in the X, in, in the, uh, X direction. So C has to move U in the X direction plus the partial of U with respect to Y times DY. It's that much more. And I need to erase my ink. And similarly, in the, uh, in the Y direction, C is going to displace V plus a little bit more, and a little bit more is going to be however fast the displacement vector is changing in the y direction, the partial of v with respect to y times dy. All right. So when something displaces, um, one thing that's happening is translation. So uh, point A is moving to here, point B is moving to B prime, and C is moving to C prime. If there's no distortion, that it's translation. The second thing that happens, and so that's when everything is moving, you know, everything moves the same amount in, in the x direction, it moves the same amount in the y direction. That's translation. That's a, I, use, I like to use a pitcher throwing a baseball analogy. I'm throwing a ball. It's going towards home plate. It's translating, right? It doesn't necessarily, you know, nothing else is happening except it's translating if I'm throwing a knuckleball. I'm throwing a knuckleball, right? It's just translating. Nothing else is happening. I'm a really freaking good pitcher when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm lecturing anyway. All right. Um, if it does that, the length of a prime b prime is still dx, and the length of a prime c prime is still dy. There's been no deformation. 
I've thrown my knuckleball. It's still round. Hasn't deformed. It's not spinning. We'll get that in a second. All right? Um, the other thing that can happen is that I throw a curve or almost any other pitch, and as I throw that ball, not only is it going to translate the home plate, but it's going to be rotating. It's still perfectly spherical. It's not being deformed. It's still, you know, still a perfect sphere, but it's translating and it's rotating. So, um, in that case, what's going to happen to my my element uh, from A to B and uh, A prime to B prime, it's going to rotate through theta, but both of these have to rotate the same amount if it's just rotation. Right? But what really, then what happens when the batter hits the ball? Right? It's translating, it's spinning, and now it's deformed. Right? So there's, a, there's, there's been a deformation such that um, the length from A to B is no longer dx, right? It was dx before, but it's actually been stretched. How much has it been? It's elongated by du dx dx, and similarly in the um, the AC prime has been been elongated by dv dy dy. That's but that's not the only deformation that's gone on. Not, notice that this angle here is no longer 90 degrees. So it's been elongated in the two directions, but it's also been undergone a warping or a shear deformation. We'll get to that in a minute. And we have two angles here, neither, watch, neither one of which is equal to the theta that we originally had. So this is not rotation. This is something, this is, this is a, a angular distortion. And they're not necessarily the same. Alpha is not necessarily equal to beta, and neither one of them is equal to theta. Because if they were, then there wouldn't be any distortion. So we have these two different kinds of deformation going on. One's a, a lengthening or a shortening, and the other one's some kind of an angular deformation. And those are going to be normal strain and shear strain. So let's define those. So the normal strain in the x-direction. So remember what normal strain is? Normal strain is change in length divided by the original length. Okay. So in the x-direction, what is the change in length? All right. The change in length is dl. Right, the original length was L. So in the X direction, um, so it's, it's epsilon, we use epsilon to represent strains. That's going to be equal to, well, the change in length was the partial of U with, respects, uh, re with respect to X times DX. That's that part, right? It's just this. That's the change in length. What was the original length? Yeah, AB, and that was DX, right? And so we divide that by dx. And since we're not mathematicians, so don't tell your mathematician friends we did this, we're just going to cancel out the dx's. And we're going to say that, that the strain, the normal strain in the x direction is a partial of u with respect to x. I mean, you've got a bunch of calculus theorems you've got to do to say that, but you know. That's why I became an engineer, because I could, I could, cancel, I could cross the two dx's out and get the right answer, but I couldn't explain to the professor why. So I became an engineer. Um, so we can do the same thing in the y direction. I'll, I'll do this pretty quickly because uh, I want to get us out of here on time. Whoops, didn't mean to do it that quickly. Um, and the change, and we have the same thing in the y direction where the change in length is a partial of v now with respect to y times dy, and the original length was y, so we're just going to end up with that the, the normal strain in the y direction is just a partial of v with respect to y. That's the simple one. Let's do the shear stresses. Okay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I want to do. I want to do this in terms of vector notation because we're going to do a tensor here in a second. So, if I write this in terms of vector notation, remember p was my displacement vector, which I can just write as u times i hat plus v times j hat plus k times uh, k. You don't remember the hats? Those are the unit vectors in each of the three directions. And if you don't understand that, go back and read that engineering mechanics text I just gave you to read. Um, so these are, and so the normal strains then are just these three strains. So I, I'm just, I'm just extrapolating. We just did, really did this in two dimensions. I just want to, I want to just by uh, analogy extend this to three dimensions. I'm not going to sit here and prove the three-dimensional one, but it, it seems simple up to accept. Um, so those are my three normal uh, strains because we're going to put this in a, a tensor notation in here in a minute. Okay, so let's look at shear strain now. So shear strain is the angular distortion, right? Um, and um, so 
the first thing we got to do is we got to take out the uh, rotational part of it because the rotation there's a there's an angle that goes there, but it's the same on both sides. So we want to get the get rid of the rotation. Um, so it's only a, alpha and beta here that represent the angular distortion, where theta is just the rotational part of it. So, so the shear strain along AB is going to be, we're going to use this uh, characteristic of, um, we're actually going to, if you figure this out, we want the angle, but what we're really going to know is the, is, the, is the sides of this triangle, right? But shear strains are really pretty small, so we're going to use the we're going to use the property that for very small alphas, that tangent alphas is approximately equal to alpha. That way, we don't have to have tangents in our in our terms. So if I do that, then the tangent of alpha, right? That's the opposite over adjacent. Well, what's the opposite of this triangle? The opposite of this triangle is dv by dx times dx, right? And the adjacent is just dx. Right, so that's the that's the tangent of alpha, and I can do the same thing for beta. And in, in case of beta, the opposite is going to be this part. The opposite of the angle beta is going to be the partial of u with respect to y times dy, and the the uh, adjacent is just going to be dy. So that's going to be my definition. Or I'm going to again make the mathematicians crazy and just cancel the dy's and say that beta is the partial of, of u with respect to dy. Okay, so the, sh the total shear stress, now notice those two are related to each other. The total shear stress in that plane has got to be alpha plus beta. So um, the, the shear strain is going to be alpha times beta. But notice that it's a cross product thing. It's, it's V by dx plus du by dy. Similarly, we can show that, uh, uh, that um, gamma, we use gamma here. Uh, uh, to, de to use gamma to designate shear strains, and we have the same notation. This is the shear strain in the y direction, in the y plane, in the z direction. This d dv by dz plus dw di by dy, and the third one is going to be dw by dx plus du by duz. So those are our shear strains, and so we're going to put together our, our shear tensor, and this is going to be our shear tensor. It's very analogous to our stress tensor. Uh, uh, down the, uh, um, the central axis, we're going to have our normal str our shear strains. Um, and we're going to divide by two here. You'll hear this notation where we, where we divide by two. Sometimes you'll hear this called engineering strain. Um, as, uh, and uh, this is just a when you when you do the vector uh, when you do I'm sorry when you, when you do the matrix algebra, um, what, what this has to do with let me the, the way I that, that I best understand it is remember that we have two of these components here and that the shear stress is actually in one point has two components to it right, so if we when we do that when we do the the um, um, matrix algebra if we don't divide by two we end up calculating all the shear strains as being twice as big as they really are so we just divide by two. And I don't know why that's been, been called. Uh, um, I'm, so, I'm sorry that I, I said this wrong. That this is this is the engineering strain, just the, the the gamma part. And then we divide by two when we put it in a tensor because that makes the tensor algebra come out right. That's the easiest way to say it. Don't sweat the load on that. I promise you, I won't quiz you on that. So the engineering strain is called. So the engineering mechanics guys like to call this engineering strain because then the true strain is actually gamma divided by two. And we say, well, no, but that's actually the deformation in this area. You know, and but they say, yeah, but when we put it in our matrix, it doesn't work right. So the true strain is gamma divided by two. So they call it engineering strain. But the gamma, but that's that is the real deformation in the in that plane. Does that make sense? In in a tensor divided by two. If you don't understand stuff, just when you put it in a tensor divided by two. Um, sometimes again you will see. Um, oh, this is just this is just the symmetry part. I'm sorry, where the, the, the just like this the uh, stress tensor, this is a symmetric matrix um, because the shear the shear strains on the opposite sides of the element have to be equal to have to be the same. So again, we really only have um, we only have six components. We don't have nine components. Um, and then finally, you will see occasionally this notation of um, where everything has a double subscript someplace. If you see this notation, 
If anybody's using this notation, when the two subscripts are the same, that's a normal stress, and when the two subscripts are different, it's a shear stress. Um, and that value really is this engineering strain divided by two. Um, you'll de when you read some papers sometimes, you'll definitely see this notation in papers and stuff. And if you read any engineering mechanics text, you'll see it in those. So don't get freaked out. It's just a different labeling system. All right, so you, you guys should know what st stress tensors are and what strain tensors are. We're not going to go through, I'm not going to ask you to go through and derive all that stuff. I want, you know, the, the, the concept is to give you, you know, the fundamental understanding of where these things come from. And next time what we're going to do is talk about, about these states of stress and, and doing tra axis transfer, uh, transformations and things. And, and, and we're going to take that concept of a, of a state variable and talk specifically about a state of stress and talk about what that means and how the different ways we can look at it.